So for this week on Cyber School, we're going to be covering multicast paging zones. And multicast is something that we've already covered in depth, indefinitely in depth. It was almost an hour long video um, talking about multicast and all of its uses and how it applies on our products. But one of the things that we really haven't covered is actually designing and setting up different multicast zones with all of our products. So I figured that would be a good subject that we could kind of cover today, an actual application of all these products. Now that, you know, everybody that's been sitting through cyber school every week week really knows our product catalog pretty well. So first, we'll do a quick little summary about multicast. Multicast is just a network protocol. Um, even that's kind of an iffy term for it. But for, back, for lack of a better term, we'll call it a network protocol that's commonly used for mass notification. It has a ton of different applications. But most commonly used, and for today's discussion, it's going to be used for mass notification. And this uses a specific IP address and port for identification. So that way, the different devices and peripherals that can be receiving the multicast can differentiate between one stream and a different stream. And most IP devices and SIP phones support multicast. So any product from Cyberdata, um, with the exclusion of very, very few products, are going to support multicast. And just about any off-the-shelf SIP phone that you can buy today, whether it's Poly, Yealink, Snom, Grandstream, Fanville, you know, what have you, they're all going to support some kind of multicast on their hardware. Um, there's really two different versions of multicast that you can encounter out there in the wild. Kind of standard multicast that's you know, basically standard, you know, it's just the way that it was written in the RFC. And then there's also what's known as poly multicast, formerly polycom multicast, now poly. Um, but these are the two most common that you're going to run into. There's probably more out there, but I've never run into any other kinds of flavors of multicast. And polycom basically builds on the standard multicast but drops a little proprietary channel identifier on top of it. And it really changes how standard multicast can work. It can make it a little bit more complicated, but it, it kind of depends on the actual um, person using it, depending if it's complicated or maybe more simple. Kind of depends what angle you look at it. But these are kind of a, this is kind of a general um, uh, explanation of multicast. So why would you want to use multi, multiple um, multicast addresses and port combinations? So at a base level, when a device is identifying a multicast stream, it is going to look for the multicast address and the port combination. And for example, with poly multicast, all of their different multicast will use the same address and port combination, but with that proprietary channel identifier that I mentioned on the last slide, that's how they tell zone one apart from zone two. While standard multicast will commonly use a different multicast address and port combination. But you can also get away with, just like how Polycom does it, using a, a single multicast address, but different ports. We recommend using different multicast address and port combinations, making sure everyone is unique, just because it makes it a little bit easier for the devices, and it also makes it easier for the humans, the people that are actually working on this particular system. So that way they can tell the difference between all these different things at a quick glance, because 234 is much different than 239. So it's very easy just looking at it, oh, these are completely different. So it's more honestly on the human side than the actual device side. But both can be um, helpful. And for conversation sake, when we're talking about this combination of multicast address and ports, that combo, it's essentially a zone or a group. They kind of have different terminology depending on, you know, what manufacturer you're working with or just the general understanding of the process. You know, the zone or group can kind of be used interchangeably. Zone is kind of more of an old school way to think about it, like an analog paging zone, whereas a group could be more of a new school term for it. They're effectively the same thing. It's just a zone or a group, effectively the same thing. It's just a different area where you would like to page or a different group of devices that you would like to page to. So um, this allows, and one of the reasons that you want to have these different multicast address and port combos is that way you can actually have different zone combinations. You can have one that is an all zone page, meaning it hits everybody. It hits, you know, sales, it hits manufacturing, it hits the parking lot, it hits the, you know, the child daycare area. It hits everything. It is an all page, an all zone group page, or an all group page. 
basically hits everybody, but it also gives you the capability to zone things or page to a particular group um, if you really only, say, want to make an announcement to, say, the warehouse area or the engineering area or what have you. And we're, when you're dealing with these multi-zone paging scenarios where you need to have multiple different areas, say one that I was talking about a little bit earlier with one of our partners is paging in a firehouse where you might want you might not want to have all of the different announcements going off in, say, the dormitory area where those firefighters might be sleeping um, during, you know, say, a 48-hour shift. They got a couple hours to sleep. You might not want to make a non-emergency announcement in that area and wake up those poor guys that are getting, you know, a couple winks of sleep before they have to go out on another call. So when you're dealing with these multi-zone paging areas, the CyberData SIP paging server is super powerful because it supports up to 100 different zones or groups. So you get a lot of capability, frankly, more than you'll probably ever need. And all of these different groups or zones are going to be selectable with DTMF. So that way you can just punch in a particular code on your phone's keypad, on your soft phone, on your cell phone, if you're using something like a, um, a VoIP app, you can actually go and select all these different zones just by punching in the um, actual DTMF characters for those particular zones. So how many zones and groups can a device actually support? Well, when you're dealing with our paging server, they can support up to 100, 00 through 99, and that is all for outbound stuff. And that's really helpful, but more importantly, it's like, okay, where are these things going to be played? And when you're dealing with devices that will actually be playing this multicast, we've got a standard, and a lot of other devices, um, say like phones out in the network, kind of have it as, as a set standard as 10 groups is going to be about enough per device. And that's what we have set as a standard on all of our products that support multicast. You've got 10 different groups to play with in terms of zones or groups that each actual endpoint that is receiving the multicast can listen to. And these groups are um, going to be ranked in a priority system because if you think about it, if you just have 10 groups and it can play all 10 willy-nilly, it's like, okay, you know, how do you know which one is priority, which one needs to play over others for, say, emergency purposes? So you'll find with, of course, cyber data devices and most other devices that support multicast out there, things like Yealink phones, Polyphone, SNOM, Grandstream, they're all going to use a kind of priority system that allows emergency style pages or just general announcements to play over some um, functionality of the phone. A lot of the times that can involve playing um, why the phone is actually in use in a call Sometimes it can play at max volume, like on cyber data products. Um, but this group of 10 and a priority-based system is kind of a industry standard. It's not a de facto standard where, say, that would be a rule that everyone points to. Oh, we have 10 and they use a priority system because of this RFC or this rule that sets it that way. That's just kind of one of those adopted standards that pretty much everybody follows. With one unique exception, and that would be Poly, where Poly does it completely differently, where most phones out there, excluding Poly phones, can support up to 10 different groups that are all going to work in a priority-based system. For some reason, Poly determined that only three channels are necessary. You can have your general, your high, um, high visibility, and then your emergency paging capability. So you only get three zones to play with, and I guess in a lot of the times they find that that is enough for um, poly paging in those areas, but typically when you're going to be dealing with paging to poly phones, it's just going to be phone to phone since they don't make other hardware like we do, such as say like speakers or paging interfaces, you know, you're really just dealing with phone to phone, so it might be acceptable in that kind of a scenario. Um, we can page to poly phones, but frankly, it can be very complicated to create different zones um, especially when including some phones in some pages, but not in other groups. So honestly, I recommend if somebody is going and specking out a whole VoIP system and a paging system, and they want paging to also include their phones, unless you're really dead set on poly, pick a different phone. You know, they're kind of expensive, and honestly, they're a little bit of a headache when it comes to actually setting up the different paging capability of these particular phones because of this proprietary channel and the fact that they only support three channels for paging, which is just, un it's just an unnecessary wrench kind of thrown in the gears.
So now that we kind of understand everything, let's talk about actually designing a multicast paging system. When you're thinking about actually going and designing something, you kind of work on, you want to work on it from the ground up. So this is something that I would recommend doing towards the end of your site design. After you've already kind of picked hardware, you know what phones you're using, you kind of know, you know, all the network infrastructure stuff that you need to get figured out, then kind of sort out what zones and everything that you want, you know, and the first good question to ask is how many zones or how many groups are going to be required. And there can be a whole bunch of different varieties and every every single deployment is going to be a little bit different because every location is different. You know, some places have in-house manufacturing, some don't. Some places have an, an actual sales floor with salespeople making calls from eight to five. Some places don't. So every single location is going to be a little bit different. But generally, when I talk to different customers in pre-sales or through support, we find that most places want some kind of an all-page group. They want it in an emergency page group, something sometimes like a warehouse, an office. When you're dealing with school areas, you might have paging zones that are individual classrooms or, say, grades. Say you want to page to first grade, second grade, you know, what have you. Outdoor areas, especially for schools, things like the blacktop or, you know, the kind of the play area, places like parking lots. There's all sorts of different zones. You know, basically, if you want to page to that individual area, you can set that up. And every single site is going to have a unique paging design unless you're dealing with something that is basically just built a whole bunch of times in the same place. You know, if you're dealing with a Walmart or a Target or a big box store like that, they're all going to have about the same paging design. But if you're dealing with something that isn't a giant big box store that follows the exact same blueprint like that, they're all going to be unique and no sites are going to be the same. So now let's talk a little bit about a design mock-up. Let's actually go through one of these things. And for our mock-up today, we're gonna to be doing a small manufacturing company that has on-site manufacturing, warehouse capability, engineering, sales, and a parking lot area. And this particular site is gonna require an emergency paging group for fires, since it's an area where they don't really have, you know, like tornadoes or other natural disasters, a general all page, a manufacturing and warehouse group, a sales group, an engineering group, and then an outdoor paging zone, which is basically just their parking lot. And one of the things to think about when you're designing any of thing, anything like this is say, for example, you've got a horn that would be in, in the outdoor paging zone. You wouldn't have that in the engineering group or say a speaker that would be in the manufacturing manufacturing and warehouse area that's not gonna be in the same sales paging group because you want a page to go to the sales group and not to the sales and manufacturing group. That's a whole different group. So not all endpoints that we're gonna be talking about today are gonna to be in the same groups. So first, let's let's actually look at a mock-up here. I had some fun in paint making this. And you know, where are the zones? What are the zones that we're actually dealing with? So in our big center area here, where you see these awesome little stick figures on forklifts, didn't make this. I'm not that I'm not that good with paint. Um, is going to be our warehouse slash production area. And in this area, they've got our standard um, SIP loudspeaker amplifiers paired with um, two horns. So that way they get great paging coverage in that entire area. It's going to be super duper loud. No problems getting anything heard there. Then down in our lower left-hand corner, we've got our sales area. And they've got a couple multicast speakers. I've only got one pictured there just because they would get too small and you wouldn't really be able to uh, kind of see them. But imagine we've got a couple speakers over there and we've got a nice little strobe light. Then we've got our engineering engineering area that's over on the bottom right hand corner where you've got different cubicles that are laid out. They've got a meeting room and a nice corner office for that engineering director there. So that way you've got nice paging capability there. We've got a general all page group, which would be zone five. That's for general announcements, you know, non-emergency. Hey, company meeting. Hey, we're having a barbecue or a costume contest out in the parking lot. Everybody come out to the parking lot, and come hang out, come have some tacos. And then finally, we've got zone six, which is gonna be that same emergency page group, is that same all page group, but treated for emergencies. And we'll get into that distinction and why I actually created two different groups, one for general announcements and then one for emergency even though they're both going to be going to that same group. So let's talk a little bit more about setting up the paging server. So if I were going through and setting up something like this, of course, I would deploy a paging server because this is the right device to actually get out there 
to page to all these different groups. So we're going to go through, and as you can see here, we've got group, we've got six groups. We start our numbering from zero. So we've got group zero, which is going to be your general all page. We've got an address and port combination here. For conversation's sake, I'm not going to read these out. They're not really important for today's discussion, but you can just see that we've got those different address and port combinations listed there. So group zero is going to be one of the most generally used ones, and that's just for ease of use. It's just set to zero, zero on your phone's keypad. So that way, when you want to make a general announcement, you call the paging server, you punch in zero, zero. And same on and so forth for the rest of the different, pro the rest of the different groups that we see here. Group one is going to be your warehouse and production group. Group two is your sales group. Group three will be your engineering zone. Group four is your parking lot, just your general outdoor paging area. And then finally, group five is going to be our emergency all page. And then you'll notice in our code column, kind of towards the, uh, kind of just slightly to, to the right of middle, you'll see an asterisk in the code column here. And I've gone and set a um, pay a, a co a security code requirement for the emergency page so that way it just prevents any false notification on the emergency group they can go and set it up a little custom that way just to prevent any false notification of say a fire in the warehouse or some you know terrible issue that's going on just so that way in the event of a misdial it just doesn't automatically start paying to that emergency page group there's one last fail safe just to prevent an accidental emergency page which could derail the whole day screw up a whole production lot maybe even you know damage equipment you know all sorts of you know terrible things could happen and one of the other features that they'll be taking advantage of with the paging server is the bell scheduler. And one of the nice ways that you can go and by setting up all of these different groups like we did, you can have individual bells that play to the warehouse area. And if you want to have, say, individual bells that would play to the sales area or the engineering area, you can do that really easily by creating these different paging groups. So it makes it really easy and really streamlined as you want to use the additional features to the paging server. But this is kind of the general setup that I would recommend for just overhead voice paging. So now let's talk a little bit more about setting up the endpoint. And for today's purposes, we're only going to sh um, show setting up one endpoint. It's going to be exactly the same if you're setting up, say, one of our speakers for the sales area, a strobe for the sales area, one of our paging amplifiers that would have been out in the manufacturing floor, or one of the IP66 horns that are in the parking lot. Multicast setup is exactly the same across the board for all of our products. So to prevent boring everybody, I'm just going to set up one endpoint. So that way you get a general idea of how this process goes and you can easily imagine how setting up the rest of these will go. So as you can see, starting from priority zero at the top, we go down to priority nine at the bottom. And while these are presented in priority zero being the top and priority nine being the bottom, priority zero is the lowest priority and priority nine is the highest priority. The priority engine is driven by the actual number of the priority, not the pre not the order of presentation in the column. We presented it zero to nine just because we did. Um, so that's the way that it's presented. But the groups that this particular speaker is going to be in involved in is engineering, because this is one of the speakers attached to a clock kit that's going to be in the engineering area. So that way the guys know when, uh, you know, they're allowed to go and get, you know, the pizza from the dark caves. So that way they can just keep cranking out code. So you'll see in group number seven there, we've got our engineering paging group. Of the used groups there, that's going to be the lowest priority group, which will allow the general all page group eight and the emergency all page group nine to play over any of those other announcements. And one of the big reasons that I set um, the emergency all page to group nine is there's a little bit of special functionality on CyberData products when you're dealing with priority level nine, what we deem is our emergency paging group. And this emergency paging group, regardless of how any of your devices are set, whether it's a speaker, it's a paging amplifier, it's an IP66 horn, by design, we have chosen that priority level nine will always play at max volume because that one is the highest priority. It is the emergency paging group. So no matter how you have your speaker set, if you've got it set using the analog speaker wheel and you got that thing whisper quiet because you don't want to listen to the boss when he makes these announcements, yeah, I don't want to listen to him, turn it down. 
doesn't matter. That emergency page group, as soon as that comes on, even if you're using that analog volume wheel, that all gets overwritten and it plays at full volume for that emergency page. So every device, as we go through and we talk about setting up all these different devices, every single device will be included in the all page and the emergency all page, because those are all pages. We want to hit all of the devices. So everything will be located um, in those particular groups. It's an all page, it's synonymous with the name. But then the actual location of the device will determine the other groups that, that the device will be in. So since this speaker is going to be used in engineering, it's going to be included in the engineering group. And if this were one of our loudspeaker paging amplifiers or just one of our general paging amplifiers, it would have been in the warehouse slash manufacturing area or for our lonely IP66 horns sitting out there in the rain in the parking lot, they would be included in the outdoor page group for outdoor paging. It's pretty pretty easy to understand after you go and you set it up like this so that way you know okay the speaker is going here it's going to be in this area in this group or this zone so it has to be um, in these different multicast groups and as you can see setup is pretty simple as you go through and you set one of these guys up because it's very easy to identify once uh, um, one all of the numbers in our address column there the ports are all unique and then you've got that name which has very verbose very easy to understand naming scheme for all of these different groups so that way if maybe you retire you move on to a different job the new guy you know the green horn that they just hired out of college for a little over minimum wage comes and takes a look at all this he'll know exactly how you set this thing up because you named it all really verbosely so that's some good recommendations as you go through and set up one of these endpoints and that's a good understanding just by setting up one of these i think anybody that sat through this could easily go through and set up one of the other um, endpoints if you were going to actually deploy something so let's talk about a couple of common mistakes that people run into as they're setting up a different paging system. So like I you know, really mentioned in the last uh, slide there, multicast works by priority and higher priority plays over lower priority. It's, it's you know, pretty simple understanding, but I couldn't tell you how many calls we get in support where people are complaining, hey, my pages aren't going through when I make a call to the speaker. Well, what, what do you have the, uh, what do you have the paging group set to? Oh, it's set to group one. Oh, did you read the fine print at the bottom of that page that says the SIP call is treated as uh, priority 4.5? So if you have your paging group set to group three and you make a call to it, priority 4.5 is more than priority three. So your call will play over the page. It's supposed to do that. And I couldn't tell you how many times that happens, especially with our priority nine emergency page, where I've had people go through and set up their, um, their all page group where they wanna just make a general announcement, you know, hey, we're doing tacos, we sold a whole bunch of speakers or, you know, doodads uh, this month, you know, doing a special deal. Dave's out there market making margaritas, work's done for the day, everybody come out and party. And they're making that announcement over priority nine and everybody's getting their dang ear blown, uh, their eardrums blown out. Well, that's because priority nine by design is designed to play at max volume. No matter how you set it up, it will always do this. No, you can't turn it down. If you don't like that, use priority eight instead. We designed it this way. And we get a lot of good feedback that people actually like that, just because in, especially in school scenarios, you don't want some teenager that turns down that speaker to be able to miss, say, God forbid, some kind of you know terrible thing that's going on on campus. You don't want that classroom to miss that announcement because some, you know, uh, some, some guy turned down the, uh, the, the speaker. So another common thing that people run into is network setup problems. And this gets a little bit more complex, but when you're dealing with certain switches or a very complex setup using say different VLANs, um, you can run into some general network setup problems, um, especially with, and I hate to say it, uh, Cisco, uh, Cisco switches. They can be a real problem depending on how your network is set up and how all the VLANs are set up for allowing multicast pass through just based on some of the default rules that switches will have. So that's a common problem that you can run into. And it really takes a little bit of time as you go through and set up all of your different switches just to make sure that everything works properly um, when you're dealing with this multicast pass through. Because surprisingly, not all switches, as soon as you take them out of the box and you plug them in, are going to allow multicast to pass through. So it kind of depends on a little bit of a setup. Each network is going to be unique, whether they, you know, splurge for the fancy Meraki switches or they're buying the cheap net gears. I like the cheap net gears. They're easy to work with and that you don't have to pay the big bucks like you do for the Cisco stuff.
But one other common thing that you can run into is just poor audio quality. And a lot of the time, poor audio quality is created by audio codec issues, where a lot of platforms will use codecs like, say, G722 or G729, where they're a little bit more compressed, and then they need to be uncompressed when they're received by the actual devices themselves. And sometimes that just doesn't sound great on our product. Sometimes they sound a little tinny. Sometimes they get static. Sometimes it just doesn't sound good. So we recommend generally, especially when you're going to making overhead pages, we think G711 ULAW or PCMU sounds the best. It's It was the standard for North American telecom for the longest time when people were making, you know, old school landline calls. Um, not necessarily, you know, your old rotary phones, but, you know, when we all started getting those touch tone phones, especially when I was a kid, you know, the in North America, they use the PCMU um, G711 ULAW standard. We find that that sounds the best on our products. You get a good vocal quality. Everything just sounds good. So there's there are some kind of common mistakes that people can run into during setup. So when you're dealing with multicast setup, let's kind of summarize everything. As you saw today, it seems really complicated when you think about it. Holy crap, I have to set up all these different multicast zones. I'm dealing with six zones. How do I pick an IP address? How do I pick a port? It doesn't matter. Just pick something. Pick an arbitrary number. It doesn't really matter. It seems complicated at the start, but it's actually really easy to set up when you get down to it and you actually go and plan everything out properly. Very easy to set up. But to do that, you want to determine all of the different zones and the paging requirements of a particular area. And sometimes that can involve the hardware that you're working with. In a relatively quiet area, like a sales or an engineering area, you might not need as many speakers. Or you might not need visual notification that you would need out on, say, a manufacturing area. Or your manufacturing area might be a little loud, so you might not be able to cut it with just some speakers mounted on the wall. At the far end of the warehouse, you might want some amplifiers and some horns out there to really be able to throw that sound and one good thing and you know it, it's just kind of proof in the pudding but you know planning for your setup and ensuring the network set up properly you know dot your i's and cross your t's when you're going through and setting up something like this it can be a little complicated but if you do all the necessary work beforehand and you do all the proper planning it makes it makes it easy to go and deploy everything and make sure that everything works properly during the initial setup and one little shameless plug that I'm just going to throw in there is setting up a whole bunch of different zones and going and designing your paging system is a whole lot easier when you're using something like our SIP paging server that has a really easy setup process through it. It has a whole bunch of different groups that are automatically preset. And you just name those groups and you copy the address and port from the paging server into the devices that are receiving the page. It makes it really easy for setup and I would really recommend if you're going to be dealing with multiple zones, get a SIP paging server. It's a couple hundred bucks. It's really, really worth it to save that extra man hour of having to figure out, okay, I'm trying to mix all these different brands of phones together and these speakers and those strobes and all that. It just makes it a lot easier if you've got something like the paging server that's designed for multi-zone paging. Thank you for watching this edition of CyberSchool. If you have any questions, please get in contact with our sales department. They're available by email at sales at cyberdata.net or by phone at 831-373-373. 2601 extension 334. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe for more content like this from Cyberdata.